five set of Lamar Harrington, Big T, Throw Bailey, and glad to have the coach, Frank Layton, alongside. And guys, I don't know how you put this win for the Jazz into perspective, but this was huge. Ends an eight-game losing skid, 17 in a row at Staples Center. Coach, I don't know, put it in perspective for us. Well, I think, first of all, we came out right in the second half, and, and we controlled those first few minutes. We stayed right with them. They got ahead of us. We caught right back up. We made some. This is a game we could have won by 10, 12 points. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we don't we don't make a lot of free throws out there. So, you know, this is a game that showed so much promise. And, you know, did you see the end the difference in energy throw yeah. than the, in the first half? In other words, they made good plays. Somebody threw an extra pass. Somebody got a layup. Somebody got a, a block shot. And everybody grew on that. Everybody uh, seemed to, to get energized by it. This was a much different jazz team that we've seen all year in the second half today. Uh, th this is progress. Yeah, I, I think what they should do is uh, they should really question Phil Jackson. You know, they're on a losing streak now. <laughs> but, yeah, we should look about trading Kobe and uh, break this team up. I mean, obviously, they're, they're going down the tubes on us, you know? This. <laughs> And look at the rebounding. You know, they were right in there with the big tough guys. And, you know, I thought that they could have even cut off more because they allowed them to post up right under the basket. Mm -hmm. Now, as they get more mature and they learn that you don't let guys put you down there, you've got to get physical and get them away from uh, the basket, uh, they would have cut down another four baskets maybe. So I, I, I was very, very happy with the defensive effort and, and the, the, uh, the fact that they, as the game went on, the energy level went way up. And they became very, very confident in themselves. With the exception of the foul shooting, all right? Yeah. And I can understand that because those young guys are, are put on in a position that they haven't been maybe in their whole lives. But you know what? They played a wonderful game. A lot of extra passes, right. a lot of unselfishness. I think we can take the potential label off of them. We are playing tonight with half a deck. We had a, a few good guys that didn't show up tonight, right? Uh, so, I mean, you got to give these kids a lot of credit. And you know what? How about Ty? I thought he did a great he job did. of coaching tonight. Timeouts, I thought were timely. Substitutions, uh, matchups, excellent. Guys, yeah. what Paul Millsap continues to do what Paul Millsap does, and that's just play, you know, blue collar basketball. Yeah. And he's still learning. Yeah. I mean, he's really just a young player. You know, but we don't say enough about him. That's you know, right. Thurl, he defends, he hits the boards, he's not afraid of anybody, and he's not afraid to take the tough shots or take the ball to the basket. I think Millsaps doesn't get enough credit for the, for the job he does for us and against the other forwards in the league. Hey, guys, you have both talked about Jimmer Fredette. There's been national pundits to say maybe this guy can't play in the NBA. Uh, I think both of you have uh, been on the record to say that he could play. Oh, he can play. Uh, the better the team he's on, the better he will be from the start. But he'll be a guy that will play in the league for 12, 13 years, you know, if he stays healthy. He can score. He's got a nose for the basket. He's a better passer than people give him credit for. And he's got some toughness about him. I don't know what kind of a defensive player is because the coach had to use the zone and what have you. But uh, Jim is a winner. And uh, whether he's good for the Jazz, I'm not going to make that decision because I already said that we need a guy in the middle. We yeah. need a, a big guy. But if we end up with Jimmer, we're not going to be hurt. And Frank, I know a lot of great scores in the league that can't play a lick of defense. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> most of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, once in a while you get a Michael Jordan or uh, I think uh, Bryant probably doesn't get the credit. He's a great defensive player, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I think he could, he could certainly hold his own with, uh, with a lot of young players that would come in. Defense is the hardest thing yeah. that the rookies have to do, you know, so. He'll be all right. Yeah, we've talked so much about leadership on this team. Paul Millsap is one of those guys that's trying to embrace that leadership role. We saw some leadership as far as development is concerned from Gordon Hayward. Where do you see the leadership on this team right now? Well, you know, leadership can come in two different ways. You know, if you look at uh, the Carl Malone era uh, and John Stockton, they did it by example. They came to practice ready to play every day. They did it, you know, Carl did it in the weight room. Uh, they did it by example. On, on other teams, sometimes it's got to be more vo uh, 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 vocal. But uh, I think with this team, they're all young. And uh, I don't know who the leader is yet. I think that has to be determined. Maybe, maybe uh, as crazy as this is, it's, it's Karolinko or it's uh, Okura. They're, they're not playing right now. But they're the older veteran players who the others look up to for an example. And, uh, and they know what jazz basketball is like. This, for the first time this year, I saw jazz basketball. 
a team that went out and hit the backboards, they blocked shots, they ran the floor, they defended, and at the end of the game, they controlled the game. I used to feel, with, you know, in the old days, we got within two, two minutes and we were leading, it was a lock. You know, well, that hasn't been in the last couple of weeks. But these kids prove themselves tonight. And uh, I, like I said, I think the potential tab can be taken away. And Coach, how do you take it down the stretch, and what can you build upon for next year? Um, you build on a lot, a lot of stuff for next year. But, you know, as you know, the NBA, a lot of things change over the summer. But, you know, take it game by game and, and try to win every game and play with the same mentality. Uh, sacrifice for the team, sacrifice for the win, and everything else takes care of itself. Right. Earl, thanks. Thanks. Big win for the Utah Jazz, Coach. You know, you, you listen to what Earl is saying there, and there, there is a there's a development that's happening. He, here. he was talking like a leader, mm -hmm. right then. You know, this is uh, uh, very positive. There was uh, no selfishness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that himself, Harris, might be the might be the leader. He seems to have some nice qualities. It's funny. I like Price. I think he's a guy who comes in and gives such an effort that everyone else has to catch up with him and, and play as hard as he does. So we got the, we got the guys there, I think, that can, can be the leaders of the future. And Alema, Ale in, in this day and age of, of you know, egos, and, and uh, I think this game was a perfect example, a, a perfect learning experience for kids, high school to young age, who are, you know, looking at their basketball future. You're not going to win all the time, but if you go out and you play hard and you do the things that you're asked to do, uh, good things are going to happen. So I like that in the gym. And Thurl, you said a couple of times while we're watching the game, that extra pass. That's right. That extra pass, the Celtic pass. Remember, we used to talk about right. that all the time, that you're willing to give the ball up, give up your opportunity to score to get an easier shot for your teammate. And I think that uh, our young players certainly were that example saw, in the game tonight. And I saw Hayward give it to yes. Derek Favors, Favors, and Favors passed it over to Alex Jefferson. It was Getting awesome. it back out, you yeah. bet. It certainly is. And, you know, the game tonight, it didn't affect the Jazz in our standings, but it certainly affected the Lakers. That was an important game for them and a hard loss for them. But I was wondering, uh, Thurl and Alema, the, the, when you think about tomorrow, when the people who went to bed early get up and they read the paper <laughs> around the country, by right. the way, because this was on ESPN, too, and they say, what? This must be a misprint. The Jazz beat the Lakers? Forget about it. Well, you know. <laughs> You know, it was uh, it, it was nice to see the Jazz work that hard. It doesn't get any easier, obviously, but I, I think they learned something uh, from tonight's game. But I want to say, you know, I wasn't I wasn't with you guys at the Beach Bash, <laughs> and so the reunion didn't mean a lot to me. But this is a good reunion for me. Yes. This is the man who drafted me uh, from North Carolina State to the Utah Jazz. It's nice to be with him. Thank you very much, <laughs> and uh, th that was my lucky day too. <laughs> uh, we met and we got you. You played for the great Jimmy Valvano. That's right. Thanks, and Frank. what a great career. You know, you guys uh, you walk down memory lane a little bit. And you, you know what it's like to kind of build a team. And that's what the Jazz are doing right now is they're trying to. Some you people know, will say rebuild. Some people will say retool. But you know I don't what? Know how you we, have, it, we have so many things that we're blessed with. You know, we got great ownership. We have great management, you know, O'Connor, the scouts, Broadcast, we have a good coaching team. staff, History. excellent Broad broadcasting, broadcasting team, team, a good background, <laughs> and good young players. I think the, our glass is half full, not half empty, and to the, to the death sayers, hey, forget about it. We're going to have a great team in the future. It's just a rebuilding year, and we got to have patience. I think the Jazz are going to be very, very good. I think the things we can do are in place. And this was a great and sign. And this was tonight. a great sign tonight. Hey, we beat the Lakers tonight. We can beat anybody. Jazz win all of these games. They don't have a losing season. They finish 41 and 41. I don't know how likely that is, but it's still something to shoot for. It certainly is. And, you know, the game tonight, it didn't affect the Jazz in our standings, but it certainly affected the Lakers. That was an important game for them and a hard loss for them. But I was wondering, uh, Thurl and Alema, the, the, when you think about tomorrow, when the people who went to bed early get up and they read the paper around the country, by right. the way, because this was on ESPN, too, and they say, what? This must be a misprint. The Jazz beat the Lakers? Forget about it. Well, you know, you know it, was, uh, it, it was nice to see the Jazz work that hard. It doesn't get any easier, obviously, but I, I think they learned something uh, from tonight's game. But I want to say, you know, I, wasn't, I wasn't with you guys at the Beach Bash, and so the reunion didn't mean a lot to me, but this is a good reunion for me. Yes. This is the man who drafted me uh, from North Carolina State to the Utah Jazz. It's nice to be with him. Thank you very much, and uh, th that was my lucky day, too.
that we <laughs> met and we got you. You played for the great Jimmy Valvano. That's right. Thanks, and Frank. what a great career. You know, you guys uh, you walk down memory lane a little bit. And you, you know what it's like to kind of build a team. And that's what the Jazz are doing right now is they're trying to. Some you people know, will say rebuild. Some people will say retool. But you know I don't what? Know how you we, have, it, we have so many things that we're blessed with. You know, we got great ownership. We have great management. You know, O'Connor. The scouts, Broadcast, we have a good coaching team. staff, History. excellent Broad broadcasting, broadcasting team, team, a good background, <laughs> and good young players. I think the, our glass is half full, not half empty. And to the, to the death sayers, hey, forget about it. We're going to have a great team in the future. It's just a rebuilding year, and we got to have patience. I think the Jazz are going to be very, very good. I think the things we can do are in place. And this was a great and sign And this was tonight. a great sign tonight. Hey, we beat the Lakers tonight. We can beat anybody. Yeah, the Utah.